All right, Tom has thought the reason for us to be in dungeons in the first place, items, or more importantly, hoarding items. So head into your entity's types folder and create a new item script. Then open in the components folder, create two scripts, the first called consumable and the second inventory. Now open the entity class We'll change the code within the add to game manager method to use the game manager's add entity method. Proceed over the game manager and add to the add entity method an if condition that checks the active state of an entity's game object, turning it on if off with an entity.gameObject.setActive call, passing in true. Finally, add another entity.gameObject.setActive call, passing in false, to turn off the entity's game object within our remove entity method. With our quick changes out of the way, open the actor class, add a new inventory variable along with its getter, then add an if condition to the onValidate method, checking if there's an inventory attached to the actor class's game object, setting the inventory variable to it if true. Once done, open the fighter class, and we're going to add a heal method that takes in an int amount and returns an int value. It will, from the top, first check with an if condition if HP equals max HP, returning zero if so. Else, it will create a new local variable called new HP value, which is the sum of HP and amount. It then uses another if condition to check if new HP value is more than max HP, setting new HP value to max HP if true, before finally creating a new amount recovered variable by subtracting HP from new HP value using the HP setter equals new HP value and returning the amount recovered. Open the new item class, changing its inheritance to entity. We're going to add a private consumable variable alongside a getter. Then add an onValidate method that checks for the consumable components, setting consumable to it if true, before using the start method to call add to game manager. Remove the update method. And with our item class set up, open the consumable class. We're going to add a require component type of item attribute, an enum called consumable type, and two variables, a consumable type variable and an int variable called amount. We're going to give both variables getters before adding our active method that takes in an actor and item using a switch case that checks the consumable type, which in this case is healing. It will return the result of the healing method, passing in both the actor and item into the healing call. The healing method itself is a Boolean method that takes, as you can tell, an actor and item. It firstly creates a local int variable called amount recovered using the result of our Friday class's heal method before using an if condition to check if amount recovered is greater than zero, calling both add message and consume before returning true. The consume method is a helper method that helps remove our item from the actor's inventory before destroying it. Back to the healing method, else it calls add message and returns false. Time to quickly take care of our inventory, so open the inventory class. We're going to add a require component type of actor attribute, two variables, an int called capacity, and a list of item called items, making sure to initialize it. We're going to give both variables getters before adding a drop method that takes in an item. This method will remove the item from the items list, setting its transform parent to null, turning its sprite render component on, and calling the add to game manager method within the item class. Finally, an add message call is made to signify that the item has been dropped. Open the action class, remove the escape action as it's not needed anymore, before adding in our new actions. Starting with the pickup action that takes in an actor, it uses a for loop to go through the game manager's entities list, checking if an entity has an actor component or doesn't match the transform position of the actor object given continuing to the following entity in the list if either is true. If both checks are false, we check to see if the actor's inventory count is greater than or equal to his capacity, calling add message before returning if so. We create a local item variable and set it to the entity's item component, setting the entity's transform to the actor's by calling set parent and adding it to the actor's inventory list. We call add message that the item has been picked up before removing the item from the game manager's entities list, calling the remove entity method and ending the turn. Moving on, our drop action method takes in an actor and item. It calls the actor's inventory's drop method using the item before closing the drop menu and ending the turn. Lastly, 
We have the use action method, which takes in an actor and an int named index. A local item variable is created, setting it to the item within the actor's inventory using the index. We then make a boolean called item used, before checking to see if the item's game object has a consumable attached. If it does, item used equals what our consumable's active method returns. A further check is made to see if item used equals false, returning if true. Else, we call toggle inventory and end the turn. Just want to clarify, you didn't miss a step. We'll get to those menus soon if you're wondering about the new toggles. Moving over to our map manager, add in a new int variable called max items per room, with its default being two. Add it to the generate dungeon call, just before the rooms variable within our start method. Before adding a new case, potion of health, to our switch case in create entity. We'll create this prefab after we've done our menus. Now go to the prop gen class, add max items per room to its generate dungeon method, and the place actors call within it. Now scroll down to place actors, rename it to place entities with the rename symbol command, and give it a new int parameter called maximum items. From here, create a new local int variable called number of items, which is set to the number given using random.range with our maximum items parameter being passed in. Copy the for loop and paste it below. Exchange monster for item and number of monsters for number of items. Lastly, replace the if condition with a create entity call, passing in potion of health and the vector to position. Save and open the UI manager. Import uniengine.event systems and a variable referencing it. As we'll work with multiple menus, we also want to add an is menu open boolean. Now create two headers, inventory UI and dropdown menu UI, each having a boolean called is inventory open or is dropdown menu open. We're going to give them two game object variables that we use to reference their future UI game objects, inventory and inventory content, followed by drop menu and drop menu content. We're going to provide getters for our newly implemented booleans so our player script can access them. Add in two methods to support our inventory and dropdown menus. They work in the same way as our toggle menu history method, only we have an added if statement that once the menu is opened, it calls the update menu method passing in our actor component with a content game object. This method, scrolling to the bottom, first uses a for loop to clear all UI game objects of their text, listeners as we're using buttons, and turning them off within the provided content game object. Second, it creates a local char variable of A, then uses another for loop to increment over the items in the actor's inventory component. We're using I to get the child within the content game object, which we use to set the text of that child's child text game object, incrementing the char variable each loop, adding in two listeners, the first based on if menu content equals a specific menu, providing either the use action or drop action methods. The second is a call to UI menu itself. The child game object is then turned on. Once the for loop is done, it uses our event system variable to set the selected game object as the content game object's first child. This is important as it lets us use our arrow keys to move up and down on the menu. Finally, before moving on, we'll add a method called toggle menu to provide a little quality of life by deactivating our menus with a single key. Open the Unity Editor back up and then proceed to open our controls. We're going to add three new input actions called Inventory, which uses the I key, Pickup, which uses the G key, and Drop, which uses the D key. Click Save Asset if Auto Save isn't turned on. And open the player class. Change our Is Message History Open for Is Menu Open in Fix Updates First If condition. And add it as an OR condition in the On View method. Along with UI Manager. Dot instance. Dot Is Message History Open. We also want to change the On Exit method to call our UI Manager's Toggle Menu method. Then add in three new methods. 
They function relatively the same as the on view method, calling specific menu toggles after meeting certain conditions, plus the added if statements condition of inventory's items count is greater than zero, except for the on pickup method, which calls actions pickup action once performed. Go back to the editor, open resources, double clicking the canvas prefab. We're gonna duplicate the message history object, rename the duplicate to inventory, Set our anchor to top center, make it smaller, and position it to the left. Deactivate the vertical boolean, and set the movement type to clamped. Now, rename the message history content game object within to the inventory content. Set its anchor to top stretch, Padding to all zero. Cell size to 415 by 30. It's spacing Y to one. Before giving it a new child button game object, naming it item placeholder, set its highlighted color and selected color to a light green. It's press color to a dark green and set the disabled color to red. Select its Text Mesh Pro Child Game Object. Make its font asset Roboto. Auto size to true. And character spacing to 30. Now drag the item placeholder into the resources folder before duplicating it 25 times within the content game object. Next, we're going to add a new TextMesh Pro game object, setting it as a child to the inventory game object. We're going to change the text to select an item to use. Set its font asset to Roboto. Auto size to true. And its character spacing to 10. And also its alignment to center. Just before we move on, we're going to go back to inventory and deactivate the image component. Now, selecting our item placeholder prefab, we're going to set the color to black and its text color to white. I forgot to set the target graphic, so we're just gonna change it to the text graphic instead. Now opening the canvas prefab again, we're going to duplicate our inventory. We're going to move our text mesh object just to the top. I've decided to add an underline to text mesh pro object and I've set the position X on inventory content to zero. Anyways, we're going to duplicate our inventory now, rename it to drop menu, rename the inventory content to drop menu content, and change the text within drop menu's child text mesh pro game object to select item to drop. Just going to leave them deactivated for when we use them. And we're going to add our new objects to the UI Manager script. Of course, in the hierarchy, we're going to add in our event system. It's time to handle our entity prefabs. And let's start up by creating a potion of health. So first in the hierarchy, we're going to create a 2D object square. We're gonna name it potion of health adding to it the consumable script. We're going to give it a new sorting layer of entity. The order and layer of course would be one. And for the sprite, we're going to change it to an exclamation mark. Changing its color to purple. Transform quickly. And we can drag it into the, our resources folder. So it's a prefab. With our potion of health prefab traded, we're going to select all entities, minus the potion of health, of course. We're going to make sure that their sprite render is turned on. And set their sorting layer to entity and order and layer to two. Next, just selecting player we're going to add to it an inventory component. Set the capacity to 26. And let's actually set the amount on our potion of health. 
We'll give it a four. Now pressing play. The tutorial I used to create mine required individual keys for our inventory and drop down menus. I've opted to save time and use what Unity provided via its event system support. If anyone wants to follow the traditional usage of individual keys, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.